order. Um, are there any additions or changes to the agenda? So, um, so Chuck, you had mentioned a discussion of the 2020 timeline is something we talked about in the last one, and I think um, where I think you're right, where appropriate with the business development committee or the communications committee, we can maybe visit that then. Okay. Or actually, no, no, I, I have a 2020 timeline. Yeah. What, what, what was it that you said we were we were going to talk about? Well, so in the last meeting, I had mentioned that um, we needed to nail down kind of dates and times for that. Mm -hmm. And at our meeting, we made a decision about okay. how to handle that. But I can give that as part of my okay. So, so, so we'll probably actually then then strike the uh, CV Fiber 2020 timeline meeting and kind of pack that time into the into the committee reports packet. Okay, uh, public comment. I just have one. Did you have somebody else have one? No, it's all I'm, I'm on the USS Vermont Commissioning Committee, and I'm trying to bring these 12 meetings that I go to. And I know it has nothing to do with CP5, but I was wondering if you could bring them to your clerk's office and maybe hang them up somewhere on the board. So anyways, I'm going to leave them up Sorry. here so before you leave. If you could do that, I appreciate that. And because you're all welcome. Um, it's April 18th, the commission is the and what we do, what we'll do is we'll bring her a lot. It's kind of an exciting thing. I'm the, uh, I'll be representing the society sponsors because I, I am a sponsor. Um, my ship is the uh, USS Trust. So it will be fun. Y'all are welcome to come. <laughs> All Thank right. You. Thank you, Susan. So um, any other public comments? Okay, uh, treasurer's report. Uh, Nathan is uh, in his newish job right now and said um, he swamped, so he couldn't make it tonight. Um, we got the, we had previously got the um, bank account set up. He and I are both now set up on uh, online banking, so I can see into the VSCCU account, uh, still waiting for checks to be delivered and uh, debit cards to arrive. That's basically the treasurer's report on his behalf. He said he would uh, definitely be here the, the next time, though. Um, all right, next, uh, clerk's report and stipend discussion. Susan, want to tell us what, you, what you've been up to? Yeah, nothing much, because I've been sick. But um, look, I went to the post office and, uh, in Callas, and they, these captains, and they gave me a hard time about having no proof that I was anybody that has anything to do with CV fiber. And then I went to the um, so, mm, Secretary of State's office and I got a, um, whoops, I got something to sign and I've been trying to get with Jeremy, he's been trying to get with me uh, for the last week or two, uh, but he finally signed it, so we're, I'm ready to move on this. It's going to cost us $25 to file anything with Secretary of State, even if it's a a renewal. Um, I'm supposed this is how they pay gym contracts. And uh, the post office box um, has gone up. Um, I'm not quite sure how much. I, th I heard from the rumor mill that it has gone up $10. So we're looking at uh, 98, maybe 120 plus uh, 25, maybe about up to $150 for the two of them to get us all registered and nice little P.O. box. I have you as an opening. I have a day where he is he's not here tonight as an opener for Callas. Anybody else want to be on my list? Just let me know. Do we need we'll to to those, those. So it's $150 total for the registration <coughs> and the P.O. box? I, I believe it will be around there. Yeah. Okay. It was, just a, it was a lower amount. It was, a, it was $92, but $6 for the keys. And they give you two keys. And that's gone up uh, at least $10. So I'm, I'm going to move that we authorize spending uh, up to $200 Second. on a P.O. box and um, registration. Don't come back again. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, moved and seconded. Any further discussion? Okay, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Okay, motion passes unanimously. Thank you. So we got $200 to spend there. Um, um, 
and then the stipend, we had just sort of sent a couple of emails back and forth about that. Right, right. It would, it would be helpful for what I'm doing here if I could get some of the stipend uh, that's been budgeted for me, and I believe that's 5000 There's 5000 for the treasurer and 5000 for the clerk. I don't have that budget in front of me. Does anybody recall this? So the budget that I sent out December 4th, uh, 2019, which is we marked as the final, um, I'm seeing administration broadly as $10,000. Um, I don't remember that we said it was going to be a $5,000 stipend to the clerk. I thought that was going to be expenses for the clerk, um, although I think there's some, I think it would be reasonable to offer the stipend at this point, but I just put that out there. Because we, we discussed the amount of work that's involved with the with the clerk's position, uh, taking minutes, and we would otherwise have to pay a person to do that, not to mention all the running about back and forth. I think it was in October or November, and then we Add ten thousand dollars to the budget at this expense. Motion was second. No discussion. Budget not reflects an income. Blah blah blah. Essentially trying to pull through town's request. Do back. Jeremy Johnson has a work on concise version available in town. Operations expense. Uh, the operation expense. Right. Uh, for clerk and treasurer will be reflected in the budget under board meetings. Operation expense for clerk and Trent will be reflected in the budget under board administration. Motion was made to add ten thousand dollars, but it's not really clear. So this is the point where I would hope that somebody else talks. <laughs> My talking would be to recommend that Jeremy, you talk, figure out what's an appropriate thing, and come back and make a recommendation and vote on it. And, and, as opposed to us discussing, saying. $300 a month, $400 a month, $200 a month. Yeah, I mean, if anybody has any thoughts of where we should start, and if that, if those numbers seem reasonable, then maybe we'll use those as a starting point, and then you and I can get okay. together. Well, it could, it could include a stipend plus include all the expenses. Um, At mileage. Yeah. So. I think that's I think that that's reasonable. So it's come, we'll come back in March. With something a bit more concrete. Yeah. Okay. okay. And, and I have no objection to retroactive to the first of the year or something if we come up with something. Sure. Yeah, that's okay. okay. I will add that to my to our list of things to do. Okay, anything else? Yeah, Chuck. Susan, I wasn't able to add your name to the website in case that helps the post office process. So right. It's right there on the on the page about the governing board. So. Right. Thank you. <coughs> appreciate that because when she looked on it, she couldn't find my name. Or, you know, and it, and she, I, you know, I was kind of embarrassed. She looked at me like I was a crook. <laughs> <laughs> trying to open up a P.O. box. <laughs> That's the first step. Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So be careful out there. Pretty soon you're robbing a train in London. <laughs> <laughs> okay, any uh, qu other questions for Susan? Okay, moving along. Uh, business Development Committee slash consultant update. Mm -hmm. David is not here, but I assume somebody's going to report back to that committee. Wow. So no Business Development Committee? I, I wasn't at that meeting. Yeah, I, I wasn't at that meeting. I
I saw the agenda. I did not see the minutes. It's no problem at all. We are well ahead of time. Would you would you like us to go uh, go on to the, another agenda item while you do that, sure. Chuck? Okay, so so let's let's jump ahead a little bit to uh, insurance and grants update. Um, in sort of a brief back and forth with um, the Department of Public Service, uh, they were will they were willing and able to waive some of the insurance requirements, but not all of it. So, um, with Josh's help, um, got a quote from Hickok and Boardman, who is. I don't know who the underlying um, insurance carrier is. Philadelphia? Oh, Philadelphia, yeah, yeah. yeah Philadelphia. Okay. And uh, to get the process started and so that we could actually then, you know, sign the, the contract with DPS, um, I went on a limb and I signed the paperwork to get us the insurance. My, my idea was that if for whatever reason the board was not willing to pay for this insurance, I will just cover it myself. I have not, it's not been billed yet. I expect to see the bill shortly. Um, but that amount is $504 for a year, and that's the minimum requirement. Not too terribly different than what we were looking for for the Think Vermont Innovation Grant. It's just that DPS couldn't twist arms hard enough to get them to waive it entirely. So I communicated this to Clay, and uh, that's kind of where we are. So do you a motion for spending up to $525 I would very much like that. Uh, is, it, uh, is it in our budget? <clears throat> is it in our budget? We, I believe we did put something in our uh, insurance cost in, in, in the budget. And it may still require us to uh, approve the payment, yeah, but I'm just curious if it's it in the budget, what so that means. Let me go back to the budget and I will. Insurance line item was zero. Ah, oh, was oh, oh, wait. Oh, okay. But we did put uh, something uh, in. Take it out, guys. So, <laughs> but 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 uh, but on the other hand, you know, le legal or administration. You could, I mean, yeah. you could file it under yeah, e no, either of those. Yeah, I I think we were anticipating when we, when we wrote that budget, like, well, if if that right. got waived, then we don't have to uh, have to do anything uh, anything else. So, is uh, reasonable then to expend up to motion expend up to five hundred twenty-five dollars drawn from the admin budget, budget? Any objection to that? I will. I'll second that. Any discussion? Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Um, there was one caveat. Um, <laughs> no, 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 no. It's um, in order for us to actually get the insurance. I, I sent you the language for this. I need to go back to my, to get the actual language that they wanted. Here's the agenda. So um, the language, and I attested to it. I said, we don't have this policy, but I'm going to assert that we will have this policy soon. And <clears throat> That it's about auto insurance. So the idea that if you know Frank is driving here to visit, you know, to come to a CV fiber meeting and he gets in a car accident, he's not going to say I'm on CV fiber business. Therefore, it's an insurance claim against CV fiber. So the policy that we need to um, adopt the, the language is. Um, and I'll just make the motion. I, I make a motion that we adopt the following policy, that CV Fiber requires all board members, volunteers, and contractors using personal vehicles for CV Fiber-related activities to maintain personal auto insurance that meets the minimum limits set by the state of Vermont. Well, as soon as you blame me, I was going to second. Okay. All right, so we'll, we'll, we'll give Frank the second on that one. Um, don't, don't. It, it would just be your luck, right? I just need to tell you the roads are slippery tonight. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so let's adopt this policy fast before he gets yeah. in the car at 7. Okay, uh, any further discussion about this? Um, uh, I was experienced with something like this when I, I was doing some work with the town, and, and I don't know if this would um, fit here, but we actually had to bring in proof that we all had insurance as opposed to just saying that we did. Right. Yeah. They just, I mean, the back and forth that I had with Someone, Karen, somebody Kathy, at Kathy. Karen, yeah. Kathy, that was. Kathy, yeah. um, she just wanted to, to essentially hear me say it. She said it was sufficient for me just to respond and say that is our position. 
if, she's, if she asks for proof of insurance, I'm sure we can go through and do all that. I mean, I think we're all required to have insurance, mm -hmm. a minimum level of insurance on our personal vehicles anyways. Yeah, uh, I just the only problem comes into play is if there is an incident and someone is, for some reason does not have insurance, and that, that would obviously have to go, you know, we would, we would be liable for that. There's no harm done in just doing it. So, um, well, I mean, if you want to send me copies of all of your insurance, I mean, it's, it, that just seems like a rather uh, <coughs> your, your just credit. send an email out to everybody and ask that they attest that they have car insurance being in the state of Vermont. You get a reply back, you get a paper trail, and you just file it. That is a wonderful idea, right? Thank you. Okay, so I will I will send that out. Um, we'll do that follow up, but we will still adopt this policy. Um, anything else on this? I'm noting that contractors and volunteers is in there as well, and we have to make sure that any future contracts that they provide proof of insurance as part of their contract. Which uh, the only contractor that we've had so far, he does indeed have that coverage, so we should be we should be good. Anything else? Okay, all in favor. Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Motion passes unanimously. Do you have your motion written down somewhere? Yep, it's right in the uh, right in the meeting agenda. Okay. So if you just go back there, there's a there's a quote. <coughs> uh, Chuck, you still need some more time? No, I'm good. Okay, <coughs> it is uh, your ball. Okay. Um, so at the Business Development Committee, we talked about, uh, well, we spent a lot of time talking about the inner aisle kickoff. Um, probably the most notable thing to note from that conversation was that the first regularly scheduled meeting was going to happen this past Thursday. Um, and one of the things we are asking is that no more than four members of the board join to prevent open meeting requirements. Um, um, but there are, people are encouraged to, to communicate with David and join if, if they're interested in doing so. Um, we also went through a lot of the learning of the survey results. This was prior to you all having received them. Of course, now you have all seen that data. Um, There's some really interesting things there, and, and uh, Andrew proposed that we figure out a plan to share those results with the community, which we then took into the subsequent communications committee meeting, which I'll get to in a moment. Um, there are still a few things to do with that data. We need to uh, collate the loan gifts and pre-subscription cross over with the definitely woods and probably would subscriptions uh, and create a strategy around how we approach people um, particularly on the loan and, and gift front um, then uh, we talked about a number of different grant and loan applications we talked about a USDA grant uh, FCC bidding on the World Digital Opportunity Fund uh, Michael spent a fair amount of time talking about just how complex that situation was um, an E-rate loan and uh, basically didn't make any decisions around going after those loans, but in particular the uh, Rural Digi Digital Opportunity Fund, because it's not a recurring fund, uh, it is something we do need to make a plan for whether we're, we're going to try to go after some of that. Um, around uh, calendar and places for meeting, we agreed to keep the current schedule of the fourth Tuesday of every month unless it intersects with a need for a governance board meeting at which point we'll change it on an ad hoc basis uh, and it will continue to be at the series green series greens place in Barrie and if any of you had as much trouble finding it as the rest of us did and want to go let me know I can help you figure out how to find it. The magic door. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Unlabeled. Unlabeled. Yep. Uh, just a couple of other minor things um, around uh, we are going to suggest that inter -Isle be provided with some suggestions around tour guides, around people who kind of know the Vermont territory and, and um, can, can help uh, navigate some of that. Um, and then uh, we were, Andrew actually asked if we have inventory for First Light, the answer was no. Um, and so we're going to try to figure out how to get some inventory from First Light um, and see if we can also suss out some pricing details from them as well. So that was the business development meeting. Any questions? Uh, if a funding opportunity arises, what's the method by which that gets brought to the communications board or business development committee? 
That's a great question. I don't know the answer to that. So, Michael, maybe you know that a little bit. Great question. If, if there's a funding opportunity, like, what's the proper mode by which that should be brought to somebody's attention? Sorry, I have an email. Like, should I send that to, to the board's somebody? attention? Should it go to the board? Should it go to the communications? Probably the business development, the business development committee. We've discussed this topic so. before. We have, and I believe, so actually, Siobhan, I think you're <coughs> going to be the clearinghouse person for... I'm supposed to be. Right. For so grants and whatever. And so, and then Siobhan, then if it's something that looks like we can go after, then you can bring that to the business development committee or, depending on the timing, the whole governing board. Yeah. I think you're our um, grant specialist or something like that, right? Coordinator. I think Coordinator. I think that's the word we just Lovely. said. Okay. Anything else on business development committee or uh, the consultants? Can I just quickly say about the RDOF? So that FCC fund is only available to electric utilities or ISPs <coughs> with a record of filing FCC forms for at least two years. So we are not eligible, but we can partner with an operator or an electric utility, and that's what we're looking at. Is that for the first round or the second? There were two rounds, right? Phase one and phase two. Phase, yeah. It's for all of them. Okay. Required the same. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, so I, even, I even when phase two comes next year, we still won't be eligible at that point. And who do you have in mind that might partner with us? Excuse me? Who do you have in mind that might partner with us? Um, you know, Washington Electric. Washington Electric or an operator. Okay. So Valley Net, Waitsfield Champlain Valley, or somebody else nearby. So with regard to the consultant, I'm not sure what information got circulated, but we did have a discussion with them last Thursday. Mm -hmm. And again, I'm, I'm not sure what you folks were, but what one was very focused on the map and the identification of existing infrastructure, possible connection points, and led to a discussion about some possible early priority locations, which I don't know how this body is supposed to react at this time, um, but they've identified some specific connection points. Um, they do recognize the value of working in Washington Electric space because of the ability to, to use poles and, and perhaps even their line workers. Um, but, but again, I'm uncertain as to <clears throat> whether this body should kind of have a discussion tonight or schedule it for March about what does that mean. Um, because the extent to which they identify priority is also the location in which they will do more detailed work, which will lead us more closely to an understanding of what build out means. Um, and so it is possible that they identify a couple of places and they do very specific and detailed, I'll call it engineering, and there's probably a better word for it, um, description so that we could say it would cost this much to build out for this many miles for this many customers. They could do that. But that would mean, it, but in doing that, they wouldn't do all 17 towns at that level. Mm -hmm. um, or is, there, is there a decision to be made at this point? Or, yeah. or could there be in the short term? But they, they, they have identified five potential regions that might be um, proposed. I think what they're going to do is narrow it down to one or two or three and then present them with more detail to us, which we can then share with the board. But they haven't gotten to that point. Okay. And, is that, and so in terms of timeline, do you have a sense that that would be next something meeting. that we would be able to react to by the next meeting? It's possible, yeah. I hope so. And are they coming at the end of February to look? And they're going to be here between this meeting and next meeting. Um, with us for two to three days. And thus the, the tour guides yeah. right, that Chuck was talking about. Yeah. So, so does it make sense at this point to sort of figure out who here wants to do the tour guide thing now? Because it seems like if it's going to be, I'm talking in the next two weeks, it probably makes more sense while everybody's attention is on the business of the, the district that we should probably figure that out. I could have to do Woodbury. Well, I was assuming it would come from the committee, but. It, Someone okay. Else wants to do no. Okay. I, I mean, if, if the business development committee feels like they have this covered, then then that I think that that's, that's great. Right. But Susan said she's willing to uh, help you with Woodbury. To, okay, thanks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Um, my expectation was that they were going to present us with several sustainable alternatives based upon um, take up rates and other kinds of things. Okay? Mm -hmm. And what I'm hearing, I think, is that somehow we're going to have input into that. And my concern is putting the thumb on the scale. Mm -hmm. Okay? Uh, I'm from Northfield, and my damn it. We had 235 people respond to that survey, and more than anybody else. And, you know, um, no, that isn't the way it should be done. And I, and so I'm, I'm waiting for those sustainable alternatives and, and, a, and a rationale for why this one or that one should go first. Uh, my sense of it is by next meeting, we may be able to present their recommendations. And that's a really early. Really. Well, it's not a it's not going to be the complete study, but, but they're... <clears throat> they're preliminary findings they're, um, recommendations. They're, they've already created maps with David Healy's great assistance um, showing densities, showing where it, inter where it doesn't overlap with cable, where it does overlap with WEC, and so forth, and they've narrowed it down to the... And, and they're working with the very important assumption that the department expects us to be revenue neutral or cash flow cash positive, positive. Mm -hmm. after three years. And so they, they recognize they can't go to a sparse area and they can't go to a cable rich area, it's, which is kind of what we all figured it all along. And so they're narrowing down to places, there may be only one or two spots that actually fits that bill. But that's what they're trying to do so they can, and they've done a lot of mapping already. And, Shared us, shared some prelim preliminary maps okay. with us. Looking forward to their best professional judgment. Yeah. We're, none of us are trying to influence them as to which should be. And you're welcome to come observe us. observers. So, any other any other thoughts or feedback about the consultant process or the the, the timeline? Does this uh, is there anything else to add about the CV Fiber timeline for the rest of the year in terms of where the consultant is? I mean, we got like looks like maybe we have maybe idea for the next month. I think there's a huge amount to add. Um, the whole under, understanding of finance and do we have a strong sense that where we're going? We'll be trying to utilize full, the full availability of VITA funding in our first request, or does it make be, knowing that that may be more challenging to pass their threshold for for confidence that we're sustainable, um, or do we try to do a smaller project? Um, and the idea of do we put some significant effort? prior to the veto request in finding other sources of finance, such as free subscription, such as um, customer investors. Um, and so when those, those pieces of work line up with the work from the consultant, um, and again, I, I have a list of other topics. And when does the operator, when do we start defining the specific activities of an operator do we do that before we identify an operator, for example? Because I think that's necessary in order to go to VITA to say we actually have a functioning business activity. So we need to be very clear about the specific um, <coughs> responsibilities of the operator, and therefore how that fits into the budget. And, and so I just have to say there's a lot of these topics that need to be um, fleshed out so that the work of the consultants can partly be informed, but then can also move us in a, you know, hopefully a logical path towards, towards certainly the one one piece, which is the application for the Vita loan. Yeah. I kind of thought that's what they were going to do. I mean, I'll, I'll start another example. Uh, uh, is, is, is I don't think they will is that is, what are we going to do about staff? Do we get a general manager, uh, chief financial officer, that sort of thing? I mean, are they going to answer that question? They will, I suppose, if we ask it explicitly, and then they can use their experience and work with others. But I don't think if we don't ask it explicitly that they will answer. Well, I mean, I, I think it was in there, though, because different business models, we could be hiring our own employees, there could be different approaches. 
and one of the like one of the bits of language in there was, do we go with an operator that's going to essentially um, turnkey run this thing? Um, I do recall that being in there too. I don't know that they're going to answer the, those questions specifically, um, unless again, unless we ask them yeah, specifically. Yeah, and, and, and right, and, and we're still early, but but in order to make sure we're using the consultant optimally to be able to identify all those kinds of questions to make sure that in the first, the first, the, um, first part that they're on, we're making sure we're getting everything, but then as we get to that business plan piece, uh, again, how do we make sure that all of those questions are appropriately laid out so that they can, we can get the most effective from them? Can we, I mean, I think we just need to start collecting what those questions are. And if, you know, we hand those over to Fred, and he says, "You know what? That's not something I can answer. That's something you, you all just have to decide." Yeah, you should know that. Um, then, yeah, then we need to sit down. We just need to say, "Here's how it's going to go," and probably we need to take those questions and the answers to one are going to lead to answers to the next. So we may have to like kind of string these in a row, right. not like a Gantt chart necessarily, but sort of <laughs> one one leading to the other. Um, so things like. You know, when do we start talking to people who've taken the survey and who've uh, expressed an interest in investing? Um, I think that's part of this discussion for the 2020 timeline that we need to think about. And I think we have the data now. I think somebody just needs to start doing that outreach and say, you know, you said this on the survey because we can't get Vita funding unless we have the, the match. So, if, but if we Walk, if we don't do that legwork ahead of time, then it, it's really there's really no point in applying for the, the VITA funding because it's right. just not. So that, that's exactly the right point. We, we have to line up some financing early. But um, we don't want to sell pre-subscriptions until we know where we're going. We don't want to have pre-subscriptions in Barry if we're not going to go there a while. So that's, so that's that point. And, and I think the idea of a small project before the big one is probably not a good idea, in my opinion. I and think you think do you think they'll, if we ask them that specifically, do you think they can help us with that? Cool. Yeah, I think they could. Okay. But but Damn. you need a little critical mass. I know. If we do I a know. little, little tiny project, oh. you won't have enough income and you won't be able to impress anything. Right. Um, you, you raised like five different questions in the. Yes, in the, I did. And yes, I didn't I write more. them all down, and my head's not good. But they were all good questions. And, and we, I, I have them written down. I will type them out okay. and circulate them appropriately. Does that just mean send them to you? Or because yes, send them to me or, I mean, if that's like the more the business development committees. The, they they, they all sound like you and David the and then discussion. Yeah. And if we, can, if we can start collecting these things and decide, you know, who's going to answer them and in what order they need to be answered, I think, and I think you know, open call for anybody who's like, how is this going to work? Um, if you can drill down to a more specific question about how is this going to work, I think. Um, I'll just throw something quick out there about the pre-subscriptions. I think we do pre-subscriptions in Barry, just letting them know that we may not start there, but if they want to see it succeed from the get-go, I think that's reasonable. When we get there... Right. As long as it's a good disclosure, I guess it's all right. But because I know... It might be four or five years before they see something. It could be longer than that. Yeah. But... But on the other hand, people who want to see the project succeed, if, if it's them putting in, you know, um, 12 months of $100 subscription, and then when we finally move in there, we, you know, they just don't pay us for that first year, yeah. whenever eventually we get that far. Okay. And, and, maybe they'll be, and maybe they'll be out the $1,200 or whatever. But if we're going to do these things, then we need to make sure we have that language so again, answering those questions before we go to that next step, or if we're doing um, promissory notes like we like we saw EC Fiber do, mm -hmm. then we need to have our legal team yep. going and putting those together before we start saying, "Oh, do, do you want to give us a loan?" And we can say, "Oh, here's the paperwork. We can go forward with this." Um, it would be nice to have those in our pocket and ready to go. Use a crowdfunding source like with money. Sure. Raise that from sort of mm -hmm. um, Really good questions. Some of those questions were inside the business consultants project that they're doing, and the other ones were things that we should be doing. And the things that we should be doing, we need, we really need a Gantt chart of all those things and when they're going to kick in. 
that needs to be done. With regard to the things inside the, the business consultant, they've been in a statement of work. If we didn't put in the statement of work some of those questions that you have, hey, I'm doing this for $30,000. Here here's the statement of work. Yeah. But and so, you know, you, you can kind of push a little bit, you know, and goodwill and blah, 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 but uh, don't expect everything. No, but I can say that Fred and Dan and Steve on the phone said, expressed a lot of flexibility, a lot of willingness to work as part of the team. They want to please. So please. They do. They, they really do. Work. So I think as long as we're not, we don't make outrageous demands, I think they're willing to look at all kinds of questions. And I think some of the, the scope of work was appropriately general, that some of these questions are sort of bullet points underneath broader broader picture things that are going to help them answer those broader questions anyways. You may remember their proposal, you know, so many man hours and so many dollars and so many, this, this right. person is doing this and this person is yep. doing that. And once they reach that point, yep. they're done. It's possible. Mm -hmm. okay. we, we should, if we're, if we're pushing the envelope, we should say this is going to affect your hours yeah. and, and mean something else gets lost, in the, which case, pulling it back. Mm -hmm. Good stuff. Anything else on business development committee or the consultant? Are you Chuck Burt at Gmail? Chuck Dot Burt. Dot Burt. Okay. I'm adding you to the little green light. Okay. So we kind of put some things out there. So, Ken, we're going to get some questions from you. Maybe we'll get some questions from other folks, too. So there's a, a thing to do. Um, but something that we brought up, pre-subscriptions, gifts. So gifts, that's a little green light will help with that as we're tracking these things. But um, having a process and having the documentation and having the legal um, sense and the legal uh, backing to do these things, I think we need to start that now. And if there's anybody who's willing to coordinate on the promissory note process, we could probably get those drafted soon. I mean, we I, I have EC fibers to work from, but that's maybe not the most appropriate thing to just, you can't just really copy and paste it. It's not quite the same. Um, but given that the law firm that we worked with to uh, review the contract was the same law firm that drafted promissory notes for EC Fiber. I don't know that it's going to be a super heavy lift for them. Thank you. So, but if we're going to go after the however many people, there's a fair number of people, let's see, 184 respondents across the district said they'd be willing to do a loan. I think somebody needs to be calling every single one of those 184 people and say, okay, we're starting at 2500 or whatever, and here's the terms. Any thoughts about this? I don't see like people like leaping saying, I'm going to do it. <laughs> We're going to do it. Uh, I'd be happy to help. Okay. You know, if there's 184, maybe if we get four of us, we'll split the, we'll I think, split the I think numbers. In terms of the actual reach out, you know, naturally, it we seems like have a communications a community. Communications committee sort of mm -hmm. thing. So, you know, but then I'm sure we can get people from there. Yeah. But nailing down the legal contract that will be the loan, right? Or being able to respond with, I mean, so 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 gifts are going to be easier, obviously, because I think we just have to say, you know, we are a nonprofit under the IRS, you know, Section 105, blah blah blah, and um, this is tax deductible. Um, and then with the pre-subscriptions, thank you for sending those um, mm -hmm. terms. Mm -hmm. And that would be using those. I don't. Did, did we send? Did you send those to the whole board, or did you just send those to I me? I think I just sent them to you. Okay. So we could look at um, maybe at the same in the same request, getting the legal contracts for a loan and a pre-subscription. So they're going to be similar. One's going to be really, really simple compared to the other. Um, I think it makes sense to start that process now. Mm -hmm. One 
problem with free subscription is we have not a rate structure figured out yet. That's true. It's, it's a, you know. That may come out of the feasibility study because we're going to determine revenue in and out and it's going to have to determine some rates, at least sample ones. So maybe we can just say um, a pre subscription credit. So if they pay a thousand now, that we're just gonna we're gonna count that as a gift certificate. Yep. They can then reuse whenever. So if they buy a lower tier or a higher tier, it's not really I mean it'll apply to it one way or the other. We we could also have a couple of tiers of pre subscription, yep. even though they're not exactly tied to what the subscription amounts are that add up to such a credit. Good idea. What's that? So, with, with regard to the loans and grants possibility, not the subscription, but loans and grants, this sounds a little to me like a, um, a need for like a pre bid conference in which somebody does a present, we invite whoever wants to come, and maybe we do it more than once, and we give a presentation about, okay, here it is. We get QA, uh, we try to answer those questions. Um, out of this, we develop a frequently asked questions kind of thing, and maybe we also develop. Maybe we've got the loan papers already there, and the grant papers already there for that, and uh, and then we can then we have something to publish, and they have something they go back with and make some decisions. Because us making a phone call, or however we're going to touch these people, um, it's not going to be may not be the same message, um, and we're going to need some you know continuity, some uniformity here on all this. Yeah, we'll have a script, the people who are calling. Well, yeah, it, it, it'd probably be helpful if we had some practice beforehand. Yeah, and doing this good. invitation, bringing people in, yeah. Uh, it's in the spring, usually. When do they do the old motorcycle VC raise thing? Do you guys know about that? No. Has anybody, <laughs> has anybody been down there, done that pitch? Mm -hmm. But I'll talk to you afterwards. I, I think it's a really good idea. Um, it's hard, and it's going to take a fair amount of effort. Uh, I was just trying to think of other things that you could tie in with. I like the idea that it raises visibility and really and gets, you know, maybe some other people in the community or, you know, and really engages people. And it's an event you can publicize too. I just think that we got. I was just trying to think of things what we could latch on to. The they every North Venture or whatever they are, the some of those VC dudes over in Burlington. They run a Fresh thing tracks. called Road Pitch. Yeah, it's called yeah. Road Pitch. Oh, that's exactly. what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But well, they that. do the yeah, yeah. motorcycle that around, and they go, and they, you know, you do the pitches and everything. You know, like if we could even tie into something like that, where we, because those are the kind of people we probably want to get in front of. <laughs> um, you know, even if, especially if we get lucky, um, some of them are in the audience that might be the right type of people that we might want to be. I expect that if once you brought a bunch of people in the room, they can ask us questions perhaps we haven't thought about. Yeah, well, I mean, plus it just okay. raises everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it raises the visibility. And rather than five of us talking to all these different people and giving these questions in, it would be nice to kind of mm -hmm. do this. So I've done all three of those. I've yeah. done the road pitch, yeah. I've done community meetings, and I've done cold calls. And the most successful was none of those three. <laughs> <laughs> the most successful was direct mail. Um, with a phone, with a follow-up phone call, so get it, get the script figured out into a, a pitch on paper, mm -hmm. send it to somebody who said yes, I'm interested, and then follow it up with a call after you've read it. We we do have an advertising budget. At least that's 000. that's that was my experience. I, I'm not opposed to doing the other three. Yeah, I, I don't expect if we had this meeting, for example, that someone's going to just go up there and start signing. Okay, I expect that it's going to be a, a follow-up phone call with that, uh, and that'll be the the warm touch. But, we, but we're 18 towns, and so we're going to need several meetings because people aren't going to travel from one end to the other necessarily. Huge. We do. Huge district. Huge district. Yeah. You have to go 65 miles to go to Costco for Grand Ole. People are used to doing this. I just came from Canaan. I know. <laughs> <laughs> but would, but would, would you go to a meeting on a, a, a weekday night in a town, so maybe up in, if we held it up in, Cabot. We hold a Montpelier. It's the center of the district. It okay. Yeah. So, so would would you drive it to Montpelier on a weeknight to, to have people ask you to give them money? If I wanted to learn more about, it, if I said I was interested in providing a loan, 
Um, yeah, I'd travel over there to find out, you know, if I'm willing to give you a million bucks or $100,000 or something, the short answer is yes. So why don't we combine these two? Direct mail that has the pitch, that has a, a, a meeting where, where Q&A can happen, like you said, and then a, fo a follow-up phone call before and a follow-up phone call after. That's a lot of touches. Mm -hmm. yeah, I, think that, I think we'd learn something from the meeting before we send out a mail. I think there's going to be 10 frequently asked questions uh, that we may not know in advance. So, How would you advertise the meeting? We, well, we have a mail list. We know who, who no. said that they were, right? Just the existing the mailer. Okay. Well, well no. I mean, we know who they are. They'd be no, I, I, like, I like your idea. I, I, I think that, you know, there's a bunch of us here, more than 18, and I think that's sort of a meeting. We could just like drop the idea that we're aboard and say, okay, what would we want to know? And, and then come up with a mailer, a one-page mailer. So the 180 or whatever it is, people that said, yeah, I'll loan you money, just send it to them directly and invite them to a meeting in the mailer. But he answered some of the questions about what's, what our potential rates might be and everything is like, how are we going to make money if you're going to loan us money? We have to pay it back. So how are we going to do that? And we don't know. So, but I think if you just like call people or you just put an, an ad up someplace on Front Porch Farm or wherever and say we're having a meeting, you're not giving them enough information for them to say, I should go. You, all you have is a tick mark on their, on their, on their form that they sent back the data. Well, so. That sounds like an improvement. <laughs> so I mean, we did, I'm just think, my analogy I think it's German. Is, but it's okay. Uh, we also did, I've done this in Canada for trails, you know, where I've done community kind of just to draw, you know, it's really a visibility, pull people in, you know, kind of thing. So I, I, I like the, the base concept. I do think it's good. And I also overlapping that with the, the road pitch kind of idea. But I, I also find your input quite interesting. So I, I, get, I think it's something we probably should figure out how to channel into a smaller group of people. And it, it might fit into the calendar discussion. I don't know. It might fit into, you know, because you're also going to want to time this with, hey, we're getting stuff back from these guys. We actually have something to talk about. We have real information. We have a compelling need now to have money because we got to go to the meet alone, you know. So it's all going to kind of start to. If you, one thing we do know is this isn't a one-off. No. I mean, this is a campaign. Yeah. We're going to be doing this for the next couple of years, right? And so let's get our crap together. <laughs> so. One thing I've been thinking about doing since last spring, and I talked with um, Josh about it, uh, is doing like a a co-town thing, like at the Orange Town Hall, where I just have an informational day. It's like an open house, and they can stop by. And I would mention that I have food. And I would put food out, because that's going to get people in the door. And they'll start asking questions, especially in a town like Orange, where money is a little dear. And, and you know, offering food, and if it's on a weekday, on a weekend, daytime, the kids can go play and run around around the clerk's office the way they do. Um, mm -hmm. So the parents will have, they, they don't have to worry about child care in the evening or getting their kids fed or something like that. So I was, that's what I was picturing is I just a you know, Q&A and, and trying to raise visibility within Orange and maybe doing a co-thing with Barry Town yep. because they've got a little bit more population or than us. Like a district-wide mm -hmm. listening tour. Yeah. So maybe we have a similar one up in, you know, Marshfield and Cabot, or Plainfield and Plainfield. Callis. Something, or something closer like that. because my constituents are not likely to drive into Montpelier for a meeting like this. They okay. just won't. But if I were having a barbecue at the town hall, okay. they'd be there. So it sounds like we're not really ready to make any decisions tonight, then. I would like to make a motion that the Communications Committee will come up with a strategy and proposal for the larger board on how to handle this for board approval in a subsequent meeting. Second. <laughs> <laughs> Any further discussion? 
Um, does um, do you want to hold off then on doing the um, legal background work for the loan? I think the legal background work is helpful. We might as well get okay. that, that knocked out, and and then we'll have it when we are ready to actually go to the public. Any other feedback on what we should be assigning or passing along to the communications committee? I can I can easily do a cost of service based on our budget to let you know the what new, what kind of rates we should be looking at. Uh, like like doing the tier rates. Like the m monthly fees. Yeah. I, I well that's that's going to come out of the feasibility study. That's oh, okay. going to be that's a concrete part of the deliverable. <laughs> oh, okay. And depending on our operator, it's going to be it's going to be different. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. Anything else on Chuck's motion? Okay. So, uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Okay. And the, <laughs> the mover is abstaining. Uh, so that passes unanimously with one abstention. Great. Thanks, okay. Communications Committee. If you sign me the promissory note. First pass at editing and let me know who our contact is for legal. Okay, and you will you will own that. Yeah. So we should, if you're going to own that legal process, we are going to have to be willing to spend some money. Um, I've not gotten the bill from them yet for do, doing the contract review. Maybe they just did it for free, which is possible. But they quoted me an amount at the beginning. It was like three hundred dollars. I just haven't seen haven't seen a bill yet. So, do we want to authorize spending money on legal? I mean, given it's given that it's in the budget, or do we want to wait and hear what it's going to be before we proceed? That seems a bit. Let's get a bill. We want to wait until we have a until we have a bill. You get a quote and then we'll authorize it. Okay. Sounds yeah, good. I mean, I can always do some preliminary work, fax something over maybe. Okay. Yeah. Well, it, it would be helpful if our treasurer would at least send us some kind of statements every every month. I I mean I'm I'm looking at an old budget here that's at least three months old. I can uh, at, I can um, send an email out with some information about the current um, the current bank account balance okay. and. Uh, I will have to see if I have access to um, who has access to that the nonprofit online. I think I do. Nathan does, and what was that what was that thing called the web the website where you could go and, and donate from there? Snowflake. Uh, no. Snowflake? The the, no. Yeah, okay. I think it was I think it was Snowflake or something like that. Whatever. Um, snowball. Snowball. It's something wintry. Okay. So yes. So Nathan has access to Snowball and should be able to see how much is in there. And we need to resolve getting that money out into the bank account because we're going to be spending it quickly soon. Did, did we need to be creating any documentation for people? Did anybody hit the threshold of giving? I, I had a, a template letter that I sent out the last time we had donations, um, quarter one last year, um, and we could use we could reuse that again if you like. Um, I'll send you that if that's if you're since you guys are going to be doing outreach. Yeah, and and I'll need a list of donors as well. Template letter and donor list. I have another point to make about free subscriptions. Okay. Sure. Um, Free subscriptions are selling a service um, to somebody. They expect to get that service. That money gets accounted for as kind of in a little escrow. It's mm -hmm. not not necessarily escrow, but it could be escrow. It's really not a way to raise money to build things. We can't use it for that. It's a restricted it, it's fund. It's really helpful because it gets us on our way to having enough subscriptions to make it work. Um, but I think if we're talking about raising money to match Vita, that should not be in that bucket. It should be 
the promissory notes and the contributions and other grants. Um, what we've done in the past is when we did free subscriptions, it was all put, we literally did an escrow. We had a legal escrow set up. And that money didn't get spent until there was service available and then we could provide it. And then we took the money and spent it. I don't, I don't know the rules in Vermont, but a lot of states have a lot of very particular rules about how you hold that money as well. So uh, we'll need to look into that. It's not earned until we get service. Oh, you certainly can't recognize it as revenue or anything like that. But, but there are also usually special other requirements. Like California, for example, I'm pretty sure has a, a, a limit on the amount of time you can hold that money before you're expected to provide that service. Um, so we'll, we'll just want to make sure we're up, up to snuff on Vermont. Uh, so um, our uh, intrepid treasurer is not here, so I'm going to assign this one to him. Is to find out to find because I mean he's he is the you know the accountant the, the finance guy, and uh, having him do the background and looking at if we get pre subscriptions, uh, yeah, what's you know what are all the permutations of you know, what, what can we and can't we do with them? So that that goes back to maybe we don't want to get pre subscriptions from areas we're not ready to serve in two years. Okay, if that's the case. Yeah, so so maybe they just be willing to do a smaller loan then. Yeah. Um, another thought is um, the group, the co-op that formed in Burlington that tried to buy Burlington Telecom but failed, they raised their money on milk, milk money. Um, and I don't know whether they used promissory notes for membership or what, but we might want to look at That's fairly public. I think we can look at that. Mm -hmm. I'm friendly with the people who run the milk money. So I can Get some inside dope too, but I think we could just look on the website to see stuff. Um, and we may be able to use a similar approach to what they did. It's a different objective. We're not we're not offering pieces of our right. CUD. Yeah, if you want, if you'd follow up with the milk money folks and look at what's um, what's required, sure, that would be. I think that that would be valuable because I mean any. I think any options, I mean, you know, going directly to the people who said that they were going to support us with loans, that's one thing, but going on milk money, that's also much more visible, it's much more outreach, and maybe there's folks that are not in our district that just want to support, you know, like keep ET local. There was plenty of people who invested in that who were not in Burlington. Um, so. so I personally, our Kingdom Fiber had a milk money campaign. I, I see it. It failed. It didn't raise enough, so I returned the funds to everybody who invested because it wasn't enough. It was just so percentage-wise, how, how close did you get? Um, Low, 40, high, forty percent. Okay. Well, it'd be. I think it's worth worth exploring. Yeah. Um, Successful crowdfunding requires a fair amount of marketing. Mm -hmm. It does. Funding. It does. Yeah. It's not a set of We got investors from outside of the region, but most wanted, you know, can I get service? If I can't, nah, I don't think I'm going to invest. <laughs> okay. Anything else on Business Development Committee or consultant stuff? Still you, Communications Committee. All right, I'm going to go quickly because we're a little, a little behind here. Um, the primary thing we talked about in the Communications Committee uh, that everyone should be aware of is uh, all of the various channels that we have, as well as channels we're maybe not exercising right now, such as print publications and, and uh, resources at, say, VT Digger in seven days and, and so forth. Um, and uh, really what it came down to is we decided that we needed to assemble uh, a bit of a strategy around who we're trying to talk to, why we're trying to talk to them, and then we can back our way into what is the appropriate mechanism to talk to them. Um, and so we'll be putting together some proposals on that for the, for the broader board to take a look at once we agree internally on, on what we think the best way to go on that is. Um, the other detail that might be relevant to folks uh, is just around meeting times because the Business Development Committee and Communications Meeting uh, Committee share a number of members. We're going to piggyback those meetings on a back-to-back -back basis. 
Uh, so we'll be holding those meetings on the fourth Tuesday of every month, again, subject to whether we exercise our need to use it as a broader board. Um, and it will be at the Series Greens office in Barrie until hopefully someday we find a place in London. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, oh, sorry, one, one last detail, and that is as part of putting together that strategy, we are also going to try to make it such that we act as a resource for everybody here to provide messaging. So if you have a need to provide messaging out to the community, um, we should be able to assist with messaging that's either pre-vetted or has been uh, constructed from other pre-vetted claims that, that we are comfortable as a body making. Um, so I, I would say be communicative about your communications needs. Me. Yep. Just wanted to kind of piggyback on that a little bit. My primary care physician at um, CDMC, he's a UVM family medicine thing, is um, piloting telehealth. So I can do online cons consultations with him and so I'm going to the office. And he's trying to get the others in his practice to do it too. So that's that's coming. It's here in central Vermont now. Hmm. So that's another little pancake turner that we can slip under people and bad medical. That's interesting. And uh, while we're talking about the, about the hospital, there's they also spend a fair bit of money installing um, network connections to their the people who do coding at home. So they save money by not having office space, and these people just do that from home. But they they pay for the internet connections to be extended to them in some cases where there's not not cable or not a decent connection otherwise. So this might be a so good anchor partner as well. And they're and their their coders live all over the place. Safe travels, Frank. Thanks. So I'm sort of lost here because we we talked about a lot of things, but seems still pretty cloudy, amorphous, etc. Um, there must be some time in which we want to have money in the bank that we got from others. And do we have an idea of when? Or should we have an idea? I think we should have an idea of when we're going to need money. Rather than saying, oh, I guess we needed that last month or last week or last year. Um, well, I mean, in, in terms of the project that we're currently working on, I think we have, we're pretty solid on how how we're funding the project with Inter Isle. I think right. that's that's completely clear. But that's and, going to use almost all the money, pretty much. Well, we have a fair bit of we still have a fair bit of USDA funding that's oh, yeah. available to us for these, you know, for parts of this project too. Um, that is a that's something that we pay for first and we get reimbursed. So um, these bigger ticket things like if we do a four million dollar project we're going to need four hundred thousand dollars so do we need that to spend that not not really that's really going to be part of the of the bigger project that's going to be spent over the course of a you know over the next year year and a half um, and I'm hoping maybe sort of subtly elbowing towards Chuck that um, part of that strategy is going to be how does that cash flow look month to month or for the next year you know, when is it that we need, actually need to have, you know, not pre-subscriptions, but, you know, when do we need to have some gifts? When are we going to start running into those, um, into those obstacles where we just don't have the money in the bank to pay our bills? I. But, but beyond that, you need to. I think you need to be able to tell somebody who's an investor, we want your money today, tomorrow, the next day. We we want to give them a date that that the money. It isn't something they say, oh, yeah, I'll give you money, and then you never hear from them again. You sort of need to tie them down. And so thinking that there's a date, not a not a fail-safe date, but that there's a date that we, we want to start having income, and by this date we want to have an assuredness anyway from reliable people that will have this amount. In. I mean, isn't that what you pretty much, like you said, you gave all your money back because on, on one project, because it didn't meet the requirements. Right. And, and we don't, I think we'd rather not have that happen. Um, and 
I think to Ray's point, this kind of comes to the idea of it would be really helpful if we had sort of had you know a Gantt chart, if you would, of some of the milestones that we know we have coming ahead of us. So, for example, um, is there you know what is the deadline on the on the beta application process, and, and how are we working backwards from that deadline? Um, what are the other grant opportunities? And, and so, Jeremy, to push back a little bit on what you said, I, I, I actually think figuring out the potential cash flow projections and forecasting might be something that's best done by business development. Okay. But it, I could see it maybe being a collaboration between the two since there, there's a reliance on, the, on the outreach. Yeah, yeah. So, so business development decides more uh, about the timelines yeah. and the and communications is more involved than in the, the strategy for meeting those. Yes, and the okay. messaging. That makes sense. Yeah, okay. but we built a budget based on some assumptions. We, mm -hmm. we felt like uh, we're going to get a $4 million loan for Vita. It's going to be basically a line of credit, not all of it up front. They're going to be drawing down on it. The $400,000, is that a match that was required up front, or is that something that we have to be able to meet? You know, so we need $100,000 in September for grants, loans, or whatever. And then the following March, we need another $100,000. In order to kind of get the, the burn rate on the the $4 million is going to be this. And it's probably going to start out slow and then it's going to accelerate or something. Um, and so we need to kind of know where we think we're going so we can do this other part. Um, and, and is there something else besides a matching fund for VITA that we need to get some funds because for operational requirements or something else, studies, campaigns, legal support, et cetera. So the, 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 you know, the three-year budget, might be a helpful exercise. Want to write it? No. <laughs> Some, I, some, I, I, somebody I, I, does. I don't know what the burn rate is. We're going to need an enormous amount of money in one year. Because which year is that? This this year. This year. year. This year. What's because it? we're going to apply to Vita when this when the yeah. business plan is over. Yeah. But only we're not going to apply if we don't don't have any money to match. Do, do, do we need four hundred thousand dollars up front? I think so. If I was Vita, I wouldn't say, "Oh, we can raise a hundred thousand to match." Here's our plan. Well, I, I would say you need to ask all. You need to show here. us that you're going to be able to do four million. Mm -hmm. So otherwise, they won't grant us. I think we need to know the answer to that question. Yeah. And, and we certainly didn't put it in our budget that we're getting four million. We no. put in there what we thought we were going to oh. spend. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's true. But I, I believe that even if it's one million, we've got to raise that hundred thousand before we go apply to them. Okay. And that's soon. Well, it's nice to know. This summer. Yeah, well, it's nice to know. Yeah. Give me a day. July 1? Okay, now we need. Now we know what we need to do. A campaign. Right away. Yeah, right away. That's, I mean, and the answer to that question is whether or not you can do four million dollar, four one million dollar attempts, you know, give us a million this year, a million, a million, and no, two million. We should ask them. We should ask them yes, that yeah, and get an answer. But. I think at the, the time being, we should assume you're going to need four hundred thousand dollars, for an assumption that you can get four hundred thousand anyway. And, and I'm assuming they can because hey, they did it already down south, so they got a lot more than four hundred thousand. So yeah, I don't. I don't. After about seven years trying. So can we just, right, but that was seven years. Can we leave this out. Well, can we, can we, yeah. So. <laughs> Yeah, so so I will I will follow up with with Yun Young, and ask her specifically when is that match needed when we apply for it, which my instinct was that yes that it was needed at the time of application. I'm looking at the application now. Um, they're asking for, you know, your essentially asking for your bank statement. So ten percent match. Yeah, ten percent match, uh, or I, I should say, the way, the way it's phrased is they will um, the four million dollars can be. Um, up to 90% of the project. And the t other 10% has to come from somewhere. So it doesn't end up being exactly you know, 400,000, but it's so, there. But, but that sort of leaves some room for interpretation in terms of maybe you just show that you can get the funds over time of the project. And that's and that's where I need to follow up with Yun Young, especially if we also have some um, in-kind. So in-kind could contribute to some of that. I'm not, when, I'm not completely sure that's going to be the lion's share. So just on the constructive brainstorming thought, 
Um, does anybody know of an idle, very talented person who knows how to do business development and finance who might, like, do we want to create a position like our clerk or our treasurer to create an actual position, somebody who can actually focus on this full time rather than us talking in circles? We have somebody who's already offered in kind time to do this as part of our USD application. And we are not Stan at ValleyNet. So, so we just need to ask him. Leverage that because I, this is However, just, does something go with that? Well, as soon as you go, yeah. But I, yeah, because I just, to me, this is this is an operational, executive, you know, administrative, whatever role. It's something that somebody's really got to focus on and present us with ideas and things. Because we can all talk, but none of us have bandwidth or time or the ability to follow through on execution yeah. and get consistency. Yeah, yeah. So I, I guess I just, I'm sitting here going, who do I know? <laughs> There's somebody out there that's got to be, you know, that'd be willing to do this. Um, or do we even advertise for it? I don't know. It's just something to think about. We don't have to, we don't have to resolve it right now. But it's, you got to move beyond kind of whatever to... You know, well, to so my, my marching orders that I have for myself here is following up with Vita to find out what's what the deal with the match is and finding out if we can have successive applications so we can, if we can go a bite at a time. That's although although I am with Michael on this one, I think that we kind of really need to go for the gusto and uh, the big project first. And we should go for a USDA Rural Development Grant and an NBRC grant yeah. and propose that we're going to use those funds as match into the VEDA. And then we have much less money to have to raise from the public. What was the, the second pieces. grant you said? Northern Border, Northern Border Regional Commission. <coughs> that, was, that was something that we had talked about last year, but I think we didn't, we weren't we eligible. Weren't yeah, we weren't ready. Yeah, now we are. And, okay. and those grants are like in May, so it's the timing is good. Mm -hmm. and the grant that Tom just sent me information about is up to $10,000. I don't know if you agree or if they ask for that, but I figure we just ask for it. But it, we, we applied for this last year, we didn't get it. but. They're, they're asking the same kinds of questions and doing the same kind of thing, and apparently they liked our, our okay. application last year. So, but we've got a more solid application this year because we can talk about the legislation that's changed, so we can work with WEC and our in our ongoing relationship with WEC and all of that, so that. It's, uh, so somebody needs to own the process of applying for the NBRC and the USDA grants because that is not a trivial process. No. Well, well, I mean, so, well, so somebody we has to be. Okay. Some of the funds we have, that might be the way to do it. Just, I don't. Well, I, I don't have the time to do it. Because Je yeah, so Jerry did the majority of the USDA rural development loan mm -hmm. last year. I wrote the Think Vermont loan. David wrote the, um, the DPS. the big, the uh, yeah DPS grant. So it's tiring. <laughs> there's a lot, there's a lot involved. I mean, if, and if, again, if I didn't have a full-time job and other stuff going on too, I, right. I could probably do this, but I think Lots of us could do it, some, some, somebody, needs, somebody needs to be the tip of the spear, whether that's a person that we hire. How do we hire somebody to do it? That's what I was getting at. Or can we find a volunteer even to start? That's what we're doing in kind. We treat it as a kind of treasurer and clerk and at least give it as a kind of thing and then graduate. But I don't know, that, that might take a lot of effort in and of itself. It's not easy. But it's, it's good to think about it. And think of who you know that might. So, so let's, let's kind of pitch this over the fence to business development and see what they think about timing and about um, whether we need to invest in somebody to do this or if we think that we can use our collective free time to go after another USDA grant or another Northern Borders grant. I d don't, I know less about the, the NBRC process. That's easier than USDA. Good. Um, USDA, we can get up to 100,000. NBRC, we can get up to 250. That's 350, and we have 30. You know, we, we don't have to, if we can get those grants, 
that's going to be a real bonus for going for the data thing. Mm -hmm. So I've never even seen any of these uh, grant applications, but are they onerous? Are they 52 pages? Of, USDA uh, is onerous, NBRC is less so. Yeah, our, yeah our, our grant application, aside from all the miscellaneous PDFs and things that had to be signed, the actual, the actual application where you fill in the numbers is probably about five pages. Um, and then there's the narrative and the explanation, which was 20, maybe more. To get this into some sort of a Gantt order, when is the beta application due? When, when we apply rolling. for it. No need for okay. Rolling. When are the other? When is the NBRC due and the USDA due? It hasn't been announced about yet. The same it's typically time in May. It's been announced, right? It's typically in May, but it hasn't okay. been announced yet. And, uh, and, the, and when will they decide? Because when they decide is when we have the money that's matching for the beta thing. It's mid something. Yeah, NBRC is not part. I review them. Um, <laughs> <laughs> they're they are decided in August, and then the governor is announced usually in early September. And so it sounds like this in July. It sounds like the meet is in October then. In August. And then it's, and it's, that, uh, that assumes that we've done this. And as a back, a fallback on that, we've actually started the campaign. It might get some grants and more. At least come up with 200,000 between now and September. And we, and I mean, and we should, and these should be done. These should be parallel tracks. Oh yeah, yeah, clearly. yeah, yeah. And so, and, and if we have, if we find ourselves at some point, we're like, oh, we got a couple of really big loans from individuals, and we hit that 400k, then I think that we that we can start applying earlier. And so we're going to pay a grant person about 10k. I have no idea. We're just making up a number. And, and, and any grant person we we retain, they're going to spend an awful lot of time with. Very few people gathering, sucking out the information from you, the time that you would have spent actually doing the grant, sucking all the information out and putting it on the form. But we're going to wind up paying this person, and we, that seems like a, a critical path forward. And so, uh, some advertising the front porch forum to begin with, and something coming out of the communications committee real soon. That's all I could plan, or what? Well, it sounds like something to give to the Business Development Committee to take that, chew on it, and kind of fl flesh it out, Javon. Are we willing to consider a grant writer who is not located in Vermont? I, I mean, I, I would prefer if they were here, but I mean, this it still has to get done. I have several friends who used to be grant writers all around the country, and they, I, I'm asking them if they know how we would go about doing this, but um, there's the possibility one of them may say, oh, you know, I could do that. I'm a, they're, they're retired. But Ask yeah, them. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, just just get it. if you can get a sense of their interest level, if they're willing to do that. I mean, especially knowing that um, it's a kind of a just a discrete project. Um, we have the we basically have the information. It's going to be you're, you're right. It's like sort of massaging it into the right format, right, writing the narrative that expresses what what we're doing. Yeah, I mean, it's not it's not hard. It's tedious. So just for a second, could we go back and just look at the 180 people? I, I would I would imagine that, you know, they said, yeah, well, I'll lend you money. If they weren't told that they were going to get 8% or 4% or whatever, but they said they'd lend money. But I bet you there's four people on that 180 that, that would lend money if, if um, they had some reasonable idea of what the interest rate. So you have an idea. I mean, you could do that tomorrow sort of thing. Um, I mean, so, money, money that earns money is what people, you know, that's what they do with the money, right? Yep, but capitalism, right? So, mm -hmm. but that's, so that part, part of that, part of that process is me getting the promissory note example that I have to Phil, who's going to look at that and then pursue with um, legal counsel what that looks like. They should have a pretty good sense of what the rates are. I mean, my, my, my guess, it's going to be like seven. Does that seem... Reasonable, Michael? Plus or minus? Uh, I'm not a good person to ask that. Okay. I, I, I just seem to remember we had but this conversation before. Seven, yeah, but they do yeah, yeah. 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 That's pretty high risk. I think that's where EC Fiber was in mm -hmm. six and a quarter to seven. Yeah, yeah. seven. And then they had to buy it, they bought them back when they were able to get. Mm -hmm. But there was, right. but but, but there was some like interest, like payment to firm at times and whatever, <coughs> so that you could establish cash flow. You could actually have revenue to then to pay these things back. 
so yes, these would all be things we would need to package in there. But yeah, I mean, it's, we're not going to know what the what those are until, I mean, they're promissory notes. They're unsecured loans. So if things go poorly, they don't get their money back. Life goes on. So if 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 there are four people and each of them has fifty thousand, or there's eight people and each of them has twenty five thousand, I mean, fifty thousand dollars, seven percent is a hefty chunk of change, you know, in a year. So it's it's better than you can get more or less anywhere else. And even though, yeah, it's risky, well, that's how they made their money. So um, no riskier than the stock market. Huh. <laughs> so we're going to borrow money and pay debt for a matching fund to borrow money yeah. uh, for $4 million for which we're going to pay an interest rate on. And, and actually, the end of that rainbow is that it's going to be retired when we go out and borrow money because mm -hmm. this is supposed to be kind of a bridge loan. And, right. and about three or four years from the time of the onset, we will go out and finance that four million. Once we get a house with cars. This, this <laughs> well, well, well but, 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 we're gonna, but we're gonna refinance it with cheaper money right. that's a revenue right. bond, right. and we're gonna retire the Vita loan. We'll retire this expensive 7% promissory note right. morass and hopefully be then stable. And then we know we've got a much cheaper three percent or four percent or whatever whatever the the, uh, the bond rates are at that point. And then yeah, and I expect every year there'll be there'll be more as we expand, and we'll just keep keep we doing this. Just ask Mike. Mike. Remember. Uh -huh. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> If somebody somehow has like Buy a... Buy my vote. If, <laughs> so, my no. <laughs> so, so if somebody's like a second degree connection on LinkedIn to him or something with it, yeah, just give him a call and say, I can give you 7%, just drop us a million. <laughs> no, he wouldn't go for seven, but... We are seeking a communication development director, the individual search of public relations manager to help build the strength and mission of developing community and stakeholders, media outlets, see your team, plan, fundraising efforts, relationships, grant writing, and marketing information. Like that's the, I guess that's why, you know, I read that really fast because I don't know what series that, but, you know, that, it seems like we need that role, and I just don't think we're going to do it with committees, you know. I really do think we need that role. Money is the most, it's the most fundamental and important thing for us right now. And we need somebody to like execute this role, um, you know, and it because without it, we're gonna flail. That, that's just my fear. I, I don't know, but I don't have an answer how to fill that role. So we, you know, again, we don't have any money, and, and can we find a volunteer so for it? Yeah. I mean, this is just this is for Washington County Mental Health Services. It's a great job description. One paragraph. It's outstanding. It's exactly what we're looking for. <laughs> would, you, would you forward that to the board? Yeah. Thanks. Just as food for thought. Mm -hmm. So, so I don't know if you all heard what, what Michael just said. You want to say that again? Sure. Um, one member of the UC Fiber Board was Stan Williams, who is now the CFO of Ballinat, and has always been, I guess. And so he was the for free guy that we're looking for. And that's the guy Drew and me is offering us from the previous arrangement in the USDA grant. And he's, yeah, he's already... Is there a reason not to? The reason not to might be that he comes with the strings of Valinac. So if we have, if we aren't ready to choose Valinac as our operator, it's kind of sleazy <laughs> to ask him to do this and or he might not want to do this without some understanding that it would go to that again. So it's complicated. So it was an upfront conversation that says we can't, we're not going to talk about, you know, EC Fiber and, and uh, us uh, working together. We just need his, his uh, free services in order to get us going. So and he may be willing to do more. some of that, and I, I think he's he. A nice guy. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's a nice guy. Well, well, no, but, I mean, he might be generous enough well, to say yes. So I, I'm, I, I'm not, I'm not sure we would have gotten this far without without their help, frankly. Yeah. And he, I mean, he committed to as part of our application for the USDA loan, to a certain number of hours of his services at two hundred dollars an hour or something like that, whatever his billable rate is. So I expect he's he would hold up his end of the bargain, but that. 
that gets us this far. I think the the amount of mo the amount of time that he put in at a comparable time for EC Fiber at the beginning of their process was rather a lot more. So he has the education. Yes. Yes. I mean, it's and it would be him kind of doing the same thing that he's been doing for ten years. But if we wanted him to do more, which he would, the expectation is then that's going to be a transition to us hiring EC, EC Fiber, hiring oh, ValleyNet. Yeah as our operator, which they have already expressed an interest in in going there. But that's, again, chickens and eggs and consultants that still need to do their work. I'm just wondering if we can ask the consultant, what are, what are our options? Do, do they see a good reason to not go with Valley Net? I mean, because I don't see that, you know. But if, if they look at it and they say, like, yeah, Valley is probably going to be one of your better options, go for it. You know, I mean, it, I don't know. That's, don't we already think that? So I, I, think, so I, I think there's a lot of people that think that, but I, I, I think the there's no decision. part of their deliverables, part of the consultant's deliverables are doing that evaluation. That's going to come out in the report. Mm -hmm. And it's going to come out in the report in terms of what the costs are. Um, so again, we find ourselves constantly in the situation of chicken and egg. You know, we have this question that if we just made a decision and said go with it, then we're closing a bunch of other doors, um, which could be somewhat unsatisfying, but it also it could make, but it can move us forward. What if we say, look, there's no chicken, so there's no egg. This is what we need from you. You know, just up front. I mean, which of you can basically say that to him? You know, we need your services, and we're not promising absolutely anything mm -hmm. because we we're not down that far. We're not that far down the road, and what this work is is getting us down that road. There's no so when we haven't bought a chicken or an egg yet. So it's not. A, it's sort of it's, it's kind of posit that as a possibility. But um, another thing is there are other people besides Sam Williams who have those skills. Okay. I was just when I commented, I said, well, EC Fiber had someone on their board who had those skills. Well, we may or may not, but I don't think we do. So we need to shop for somebody. And it could be that guy. It could be another guy. But well, what if he's available tomorrow and everybody else is available two months later? I mean, we... That's helpful. So so I will I will reach out to him okay. and see, what, see if I can figure out the contours and parameters of what he's willing to do and not commit us to going forward with this. I know he's generally like, philosophically, and ValleyNet and EC Fiber philosophically behind what we're doing. They're supportive. They want to do the right thing by us, and they want to do the right thing by improving broadband in Vermont. So, um, how much you know work we can get out of him? I expect it's going to look a lot like the the number of hours that he committed to for the USDA grant. So, ten or twenty. So, at $200, it's not a lot of money. No, but, we, but if we can get him to do these things for us that we need him to do. So, let me, let me just put this out there. What are the questions, what are the jobs, what are the tasks that we need to put in front of him to get, to move forward with some of these things, right? To write the grant for the NBRC and the USDA. He will not. Okay. That's what we're looking for. I think it's part of my assignment here in terms of some of these questions. Some were, are appropriate for somebody like Stan to provide us early answers to. Some are uh, need to be go through board discussion. Some go to the consultant. But but I know. But but that's part of how I'm tackling tomorrow's assignment is to lay them all out and then uh, mm -hmm. determine how many Stan can address. So so Stan would help us put the numbers together. He would help us answer questions. He I am very strongly convinced, and please somebody you know, convince me otherwise, I'm, I'm pretty convinced he's not going to write a grant for us. He's going to help us write a grant. So when you mentioned Stan before, uh, I said to Chuck, I said, well, listen, if the communications committee is going to be developing the campaign for loans and grants or whatever, Stan might be a great guy to talk to about their effort, what they went through, mm -hmm. that would inform us that, to develop our campaign. Right. Okay. Now that's a, that's a good ask. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what we were thinking about. So, so let's let's take those things, collect them, and send them to me in the next 24, 48 hours. What are those things that we?
can ask him to possibly do with that time as part of the, the USDA grant, or maybe even slightly outside of it. Like I said, he's willing to help, I think. I think even just having all of the needs organized in such a way, you know, there, there may be those of us among this body who could tackle pieces of it here and there if we were to divide and conquer. And so I, I think if we just had an organized plan as to here are all the boxes we need to check, that would be a valuable starting point. But somebody, so this, this is true, and again, it's not the, it's the, it's not a difficult assembly. It's just a long process. We still need someone, some one person that's going to be the person who goes and says, "All right, Jared, you can give me this information. Okay, Chuck, you can give me this information," and to actually put it in there and type it up and assemble it and stitch it together. Um, that's the person that we're looking for, and if somebody's willing to volunteer to do that, um, then yeah, then we, we could all t each take an individual part and do that. And uh, Jerry did that with the USDA grant. And I eventually, I did some of the other parts and kind of massaged it, signed a bunch of the paperwork, and then set us up in SAM and you know, did all this, all that bureaucracy. So, yeah, Javon? I know someone who would do it between, for between five and 10K. Um, okay. I don't know if she's available. She's very busy, but she knows telecom and knows grant writing. Okay, so let's keep let's keep her in our pocket and Siobhan as you're re I, doing your outreach. I was just trying to uh, remember the timeline that Michael had said for the Rural Development Grant and the MDRC grant. Um, they're they're like both due somewhere around May, okay. and the USDA is awarded in July, August, and the NBRC is awarded in August, September. Yeah, I don't care about the awards so much okay. when they're due. Well, it's got to do with when we applied for VETA. Yeah, no, I, 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 can, I can understand that, but I, I, as, as far as organizing, getting the grant together, it's due by May. Yeah, letter of intent, usually six to eight weeks before, mm -hmm. so the announcement should come pretty soon on NBRC. The USDA announcement came already. Okay. Would you forward that? Um, I didn't get the letter, but I can get it though. Okay. But uh, I, somebody just emailed me and said, "Hey, did you know that?" Uh, so I saw it. Which uh, do, do you remember which um, which grant it's called? Uh, Rural Business Development Grant. Okay. And this would be for uh, for construction, rather than for feasibility, like we did previously. Right. Right. No, it's for. Uh, and, and it's uh, business oriented, so you have to. Sh it's it's, well, it's this job oriented. Is yeah, this a business. But we are a business, right? But they want to know how many jobs we're going to generate. Yeah. Now, we can it's, we yeah. can do it, but it's, somebody's got to be a good grant writer to massage that language. Well, which is which was in the language of. I mean, it, this was the same grant that we applied for last year. We just had it had a different shape. Mm -hmm. than what we'd be applying for this year. So are we looking for a cat wrangler? Is that basically yes. what we're, we're looking for? Is well, somebody I, that, that knows everybody and says, <laughs> you had that job, you had that job, and when you're done, give it to them? Is that? It's, it's more, more like you just have to be willing to do the work and assemble the grant. I mean, I think Sending broadcasts out to the whole to the whole group. I mean, it's, it's again just collecting the pieces and putting them together into the right format. It's, so, like I said, just somebody who can, can sit down and spend thirty hours probably. You gotta write. The cat wrangler has to write. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I, I'm per, I prefer this uh, experienced grant writer with telecom experience. You know. Uh, just wrangler. somebody coordinating. Uh, <laughs> well, but they are a cat, cat wrangler. I mean, well, well, they're true, not yeah. working alone. No, 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 no. They have to suck the information out of us. Yeah. Uh, but uh, we, yeah, they'll do it more efficiently than there's an, others. So you don't think then that this person that works for uh, um, EC Fibers, or not EC Fiber, but um, Valiant, Valiant, is that person? Then? No. Is not a cat wrangler. No, he's he's the so, one. He's the one that's going to so help he's us. One of the cats. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, that makes a lot of sense. Cat. So, huh? <laughs> it's a half cat. There's uh, an RD, uh, RBDG 
um, Rural Business Development Grant um, Applicant Workshop this Thursday. Um, so I have a deadline of March 31st for the Northeast Kingdom REAP zone part of the RBDG. And hopefully the one for our region is later, but we'll have to find out. But the Applicant Workshop, if should anybody decide to go and do this, is 2 to 4 p.m. this Thursday. Where? Green Mountain Powers Conference Room at 17 Green Mountain Drive in Montpelier. 2 p.m. and it's a grant writing thing? It is an applicant workshop, not a grant writing okay. thing. It essentially explains the process of applying for it. Mm -hmm. I, could, I, think, I mean, I'm not the person. That's the thing. You know, I'm not. I don't think you're the person. Can, can you write coherently? Can you write with cats? Yes. <laughs> I have no cats. <laughs> It'd be nice if you went, though. I will go if I okay. can. Yeah. Yeah. Did you say that was two, two, two to four p.m. I might be able to go. So what's that? 7-7-7? Green Mountain Drive. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we'll go okay. next, next slide. It's right next to the Department of Labor and Department of Liquor. Liquor. Oh, okay. oh, yeah, the liquor department. Yeah. I know where that is. <laughs> <laughs> it's the warehouse. Yeah, it's the warehouse. There's so many doors. Yeah, this is, this is going to be r roughly the same process, I think, as what we went through last year. So um, David and Jerry and I um, do have some familiarity with it, and we have some of our previous paperwork, much of which will be the same. So I'm... In, encouraged if some other folks can go and familiarize themselves with, with the process too. Okay, so we're getting towards the end here. Anything else, communications committee? Any other open questions that we need to make sure we either answer tonight or we get answers to at some point? Fatigue is setting in. I'm, I'm detecting um, yeah, yeah. Can, we, can we get the business development committee to work on what they expect the uh, build out is going to take in terms of year two? Year, we have a year one budget this year. What, what kind of a, how, it's going to be 150 miles a year or whatever that number is? I heard Greg talking about some, I think we're some assumption. Okay. 100 so, to 120 for 4 million. Okay, okay so um, can we, uh, what is our expectation? Building this out. That's a consultant deliverable. That's part of his deliverable. That's part of the strategy. That's how that's how we get to cash flow positive in three years. That we have to have that, or Vita's just gonna say, Well, that's it's nice that you want to build a bunch of fiber, but Okay. Yeah. So we should hopefully have something much more concrete as part of not as part of the feasibility study necessarily, but as part of the business plan that we should have in hand in, in May. That's my, I mean, unless I'm, I, I misread the application, that's, or I misread the um, RFP. RFP. Thank you. Okay. Are Let's, there regular check-in meetings that are going on? Yes. Okay. And those regular check-in meetings with the, with the consultants, the first, the kickoff, as I understand it, is Thursday, right? It was. Last or, Thursday. Or it was well, last Thursday. Oh, okay. We've had two. The, the, the last Thursday was the first regular check-in that kicked off. Oh, we had one prior to that, too. Oh, okay. And we're exchanging emails, so it's... Is, is there a report out on that, or can there be a report out on... on there, there, well, there was. We talked I mean, a little bit about it. Yeah, we already covered, we covered okay. that in the previous okay. Business Development Committee consultant update. It talked about where, where Fred was, what he was working on, and the some of the... Um, <coughs> We're looking at um, soliciting for tour guides for Fred when he comes to visit in the next two weeks. Is that sounding hey, familiar? No, I'm good. <laughs> I got on that. It was, I wasn't sure like, if they have like a, if they've drawn out like what they're processing over, like, if they have documentation like this is our plan of attack and like if there's if that's what he does, he's going to come back or if it's more just don't worry about it. Some we're kind of cover. stuff, but most Did we told them we want to talk to them every two weeks. Um, Did you get a copy? And we wanted concrete progress every two weeks, okay. and we wanted reports, and we wanted to see incomplete maps, just whatever the, wherever they're at every two weeks, and we're doing that. Do you, do you want to see that, Tom? Yeah, I think we should all see that. Yeah. So I'm, 
I, 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 under, I understand the desire for everybody to see sort of these um, little milestones and these little tidbits coming in here. Um, I'm afraid of the cooks in the kitchen right. scenario. I agree, there shouldn't be you know, direct feedback or anything like that. It's just... so, so could Business Development Committee, could you just package up just a brief summary of what the first two meetings have come to and any deliverables, we can just look at them, expecting that we're not going to Communications No, business okay. development committee. Yeah, for, 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 the, for the next meeting. For so the next that we, meeting. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. It just seems relevant if we're looking, you know, should we build out, you know, the roadmap for the next three years right. and, like, know that's already being worked on by the consultant and, you know, just having that general understanding of what's going on. Well, I mean, and the, the, RFP, the RFP and, and, and the statement of work. The scope of work spells right. out what they're supposed to do. And if you would like to see that, we can probably. Again. But but Everybody we voted on it. but it would be but it would be nice to have the statement of work, and then us knowing each meeting you know, what what are those concrete steps that they've taken, how far have we gotten, and checking those ticking those boxes. Yeah. Summary of progress. Summary of progress. That's a yeah, exactly. great way of yeah. putting it. Cool. Without those dicey details that cause controversy. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Okay. We're only going to bury him up till you guys. <laughs> good, good one. Hilarious. Before we move on. Yeah. I just I have a request to the communications committee. Uh, looking forward to town meeting day. We talked about kind of unified messaging. Mm -hmm. Most of us will probably be giving a report at town meeting. So, um, if possible, it would be great to have. Uh, you know, not a written report, but just some bulleted. For what it's worth, I had to write a report for my town's packet, which yeah. was already due a couple weeks ago. Okay. So I am happy to share that with yep. the group. I think that'd be great. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. In case yeah. you are not so we're all your deadlines. Kind of on the same <laughs> wavelength when we. Yeah, 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 yeah be great. great. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll share that with the entire board. Yeah. Thank you. And yeah, because I, I intend to give a little bit little um, presentation uh, on the floor. Yeah. 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 yeah I, 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 we have a weird thing in Moortown where we have a pre-town meeting where we yeah. do the presentations and then the actual town meeting. I'll have to do it twice. I'll do it once pre-town meeting here, and then I'll do it once a town meeting over there. <laughs> so that's okay. But you're not the only ones who are there. No. <laughs> okay. Let's move on, shall we? Um, so we t I did uh, insurance and grants updates. I think we're good with that. CV Fiber 2020 timeline got subsumed by the previous discussion. Uh, we are at, um, actually, basically on time. Uh, approval of January meeting minutes. We sent those out. Thank you, Susan, for your work on that. Move approval. Okay. I will, okay. Moved and seconded. Any feedback or any other um, commentary on, on the minutes as presented? I, I only had one, and there was, it's on the first page. Um, actually, I'm sorry, two. Um, my first name is spelled wrong. Again. On the third, <laughs> on the third line, treasurer's report will be tabled to the next me meeting. Jeremy arrived. M Y. And then Siobhan's name was misspelled. Oh. And the second line under survey results update. <laughs> and that should be just end with an N rather than an M there. Actually, it, and it occurs again later on there as well. What, what, uh, what, which one? So. No, I don't have it with me. Okay. So. Jared. Uh, yeah. So okay. that should be H-A-N. Yeah. H-A-N there as well. Okay. And then my name is just misspelled up there. And bottom of page two, Jared's okay. name is Okay. Bottom of page two. They are already posted online as, dra as draft status. Okay. So let's. Um, so if we can just, we don't even have to do this as a friendly amendment, we can just make sure that the, the names are spelled right. Not, not yeah. that, I mean, not that posterity is going to care, right? But well, all those, uh, all those fu future historians <laughs> looking at uh, broadband uh, in Vermont. The <laughs> yeah. Right. yeah. Okay, any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Motion passes unanimously. Okay. Um, round table, Phil? Pass. Pass. 
I was at the legislature last week um, presenting about broadband in the Northeast Kingdom, and I heard a really interesting thing from an important legislator. There's probably going to be more meter money. So, so when that 11.8 million gets used up, it's a good chance they like the idea of this thing and they want to keep it going. I'm retiring this year, and I haven't picked what I'm going to be working on after I retire. Right. It's either going to be, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, All in favor. <laughs> but it's not going to happen until September or January, depending on what our financial advisor tells us. So keep that in your pocket. Congratulations. Yeah. Okay. I got nothing to keep either one of those. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Well, we get done before the Iowa results are reported. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just the conversation we had last time about Starlink and how that might be one of our like, closest competitors. Um, yeah. Really looking at what they might charge, and I was saying like eighty dollars a month being a number being floated around. Really thrown out speeds. Um. Yeah. Not that it was a reliable number that I was looking at. Yeah. They've only shown out ping speeds. They haven't. Yeah. 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 Um, but just to my thought of where would we compete if we're in the same ballpark? And, um, it looked like they were doing, I think it was like 200 300 as an installation cost, and then there's a subscription after that. Um, but again, going back to that, well, once we get set up, we don't have to have the same pricing. We can have that be one of our sounds. Sounds like the sweet spot. Mm hmm. Will it, 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 it be as weather affected? Yeah, not, not as yeah. much. No. Yeah. But still be high latency. Is what? No, no, no. Greg says not. Really? No. Acceptable it's, it's latency. Lower. No, latency is 25, 25 microseconds. What? Milliseconds. 25 millisecond latency? Yeah. I don't get that yeah. on DSL. That's right. That's right. That's right. Well, so, so 25 millisecond latency to the satellites and back, and yeah. then wherever, however they then yeah. backhaul it. Uh, we so. just saw 600 to 1200 here. 600 to 1200 what? Milliseconds. Oh, that oh. That, that no, no, that's, that's for, that's, for that's lower than 23,000. Yeah, that's, that's for the highest. No, no, that was Starlink, wasn't it? No. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, okay. And, anyways, hypothetically, it, it could be mu it could be much less, and we'll see if they can deliver. In which case, if there's anything like it's anywhere between where you know what we would offer and what you know satellite would offer, I, I, I still think we'll we'll beat them. Yeah. 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 Well, we're local too. We're local. That's yeah. right. <laughs> Anything else, Tom? <laughs> yeah. I want to make sure that the attendance is signed by everybody. Everybody signed up on the attendance. Okay. I think it's over by Jerry. Oh, sorry. Okay. Um, well, that one there. And so, um, keep, keeping up with uh, keeping the legislature informed, also, um, I've, I've been asked to present. Um, so, Karen at the League of Cities and Towns, um, a local government day is this Thursday, and I've been scheduled with House Energy. Um, which are the folks that put together the, the bill that we're taking advantage of that veto money and I was that where you testified to? Mm -hmm. So they're going to hear from us again or hear from another one of us I should mm -hmm. say and so hopefully we will um, I put a pitch in for mm -hmm. CD5. And we'll, so, so we'll continue to you know, uh, reiterate what we're doing and that putting more money in the, into that VITA fund would be valuable, especially seeing as how many new communications union districts are likely to be coming online next month. Um, so I think um, Rob Fish, who postponed our, the meeting with us until next month, he's going to have a lot of people contacting him, a lot of stuff uh, going, because they're going to be asking. So those of you that were here in the first you know, three or four meetings, hopefully it won't be quite like that. <clears throat> But uh, the growing pains are going to be going through the same. Yeah. Why won't, why won't it be exactly like that? <laughs> well, because Montpelier is <clears throat> not one of the towns in their district. Just saying. They got that going for <laughs> And on that note, refreshingly, I move that we adjourn. <laughs>